All right, hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today's video, I'm gonna be talking about how I approach the focusing of a scene when I'm out with my camera and setting up ready to take a landscape photograph. If you're new to this channel, usually I'm out in the field practicing landscape photography. I may go in my camper van or go hiking or something like that, but a lot of my videos are out traveling around and about. So make sure you subscribe for future content and I appreciate it. it's been difficult during lockdown to get out on make that kind of content uh, but I promise you it is coming and before we get started a huge huge thank you to Squarespace for their continued support of this channel especially through these uh, quite difficult times uh, it's a massive help so if you do need a website go to squarespace.com forward slash Heaton right let me talk about how I approach a scene when it comes to focusing because I know when I first started out practicing landscape photography all those years ago one of the biggest questions I always had when stood there out in the wilderness or wherever with my camera the biggest question I would have is okay where do I focus how do I get a nice sharp image so I have about four or five different approaches that I take when getting my tripod out and setting everything up now approach number one or um, method number one that I like to use is quite simple, focus to infinity. Focusing to infinity essentially means focusing on the furthest distant object within your frame. Usually it's some mountains that are miles and miles away. So by doing this and stopping down to about anywhere from F9 to F16, generally speaking, will give you a sharp image from front to back from within about 12 feet of your lens. So anything beyond 12 or 15 feet will just be tack sharp. And I find this method has worked well for me for years and years and years, and I can't see me changing that method. The second way in which I will focus a landscape scene is focus on the subject. Again, very simple, very straightforward. If I have a single subject or a dominant subject that's really important, and to be fair, is what the photograph is all about, easy focus on that subject and I don't even need to worry about depth of field. I can stop down to f11 or I can go wide open at f2.8. It doesn't matter. It's all about how you want the image to look and what I find actually is shooting with a shallower depth of field when you have a single subject creates that separation between what can, can be a distracting background and it emphasizes even more your subject. Method number three is to focus stack. So if you're stood in front of a scene and you have immediate four ground interest like three to five feet in front of your lens and you've got really nice textured rocks but then in the mid ground you've got even more nice textured rocks and then in the background you've got you know some of the interest mountains a castle whatever you're gonna want that image to be sharp all the way through and that is usually when I will focus stack focus stacking is easy I set my composition up make sure my camera's fully manual and I focus on three different points within the scene usually immediate foreground then about halfway into the image and then infinity. I'm left with three files, I open those three files in Photoshop, stack them and then simply mask them and bring through the sharper layers. In most situations this will give me a beautifully crisp sharp image. But what if you can't focus stack your image? What if there's an incoming tide and the scene is constantly changing? Well in that instance I would generally opt for focusing to infinity and the reason for that and this is honestly just completely personal preference I prefer images that lead you into the frame. So if the bottom of your photograph is soft or the foreground is a bit soft, but then it continues to get nice and sharp through to the horizon in the background, that feels more natural to me. And as a viewer of that photograph, you know, I am I am easily forgiving soft foregrounds. So I would rather have that than a sharp foreground that leads me to a soft horizon. Uh, personal preference thing but I would focus to infinity in that situation. Okay, the fifth scenario, and the photographer's worst nightmare when I focus in a scene. Well, not quite. But what if you've got a scene where there is interest all the way through the scene, uh, but there's no obvious subject, and there's no obvious distant background, and maybe it's too complicated to focus stack or you just don't like focus stacking, what do you do then? Well, in a situation like this, um, I would generally focus about a third to halfway into my frame, stop down probably somewhere to about F11, and then generally that will do a good enough job 
to naturally lead the viewer into the scene. And yes, little bits might be soft in the foreground, bits might be soft in the background. No one cares, no one cares. Yeah, that's probably gonna work the best for those situations. So a few other tips to make sure that you have nice sharp images. Uh, tip number one, Aperture. Um, as I'm sure you all know, if you open all the way to like f2.8, you're gonna have a very shallow depth of field. But what is in focus is gonna be super, super sharp, especially when you get to like f4, f5.6. But what happens is as you start to stop down and your aperture gets smaller and smaller, then you increase your depth of field, which gives you more focus front to back. However, there is this kind of uh, limit whereby once you, generally speaking on full frame cameras, once you start to go over f16 up to sort of f22 on some lenses you can encounter what is known as diffraction so you may think by stopping down to f22 that you're increasing your depth of field and getting a sharper image getting everything in focus whereas actually you're softening the image as a whole and you may not realize it it's because of lens diffraction lens diffraction occurs because your aperture is so small that the light waves going through it tend to interfere with one another. And I did look that up online. Um, a lot of people argue that lens diffraction is, you know, negligible and, you know, you, you can't hardly notice it. And the truth is you, you probably can't. It, it all depends on the lens in the camera, if I'm being completely honest. But as a rule, I don't go over F16. Uh, another great tip, take the strap off your camera. You'll see all of my cameras when I'm out in the field, you'll see that none of them have straps on them. And that's because uh, the wind can flap the strap around and that causes minute vibrations. Another tip, use a two second timer, cable release or an app or something on your phone, anything that gives you separation between you and your camera because as you press down on the shutter, you're causing camera movement. So you're gonna have a soft image, especially if you have a longer exposure of like half a second or a second or something. You're, you're just moving your camera. So create separation between you and taking the picture. Use a tripod, sounds obvious, but yeah, using a tripod is a massive help. And if you use a tripod, try and use a good sturdy one. And I tend to not have my center column up. In fact, my tripods these days don't have center columns. So a center column will make your tripod prone to wobble, shake and vibration. So keep your center column down when using a tripod. If you're using a DSLR, use the mirror lock up feature. When you take an image with the DSLR, first the mirror flips up, then it takes an image. That mirror flipping up can cause vibrations. So what you can do is program your camera so that when you take an image, you have to press the shutter twice. The first one flips up the mirror, the second one takes the exposure. Or if you're shooting with live view activated, then the mirror's already up so you don't need to worry about it. If you're ever in doubt of the sharpness of your image and if it's gonna all be in focus or not, there's two things you can do. If you're shooting digital, take a picture, bring it up on your screen and just zoom in and just look around, take the time to preview it and make sure that everything that needs to be sharp is sharp. If you're shooting film or maybe, I don't know, maybe a screen's broken or something like that, most cameras have a depth of field preview button on the front of the camera. You can press this, it'll close the aperture and you can then get a depth of field preview. I always manually focus when out in the field, usually because I'm shooting low light situations, low contrast situations, and I trust my own eyes and take it a bit of time, uh, more so than letting the camera make that decision. So out of habit and a little bit out of necessity, I always manually focus. I, I think it's just a control thing. One more thing I would say about focusing is that if you're using a cheaper lens, like a kit lens or something at the bottom end, bottom end of the scale, then this isn't going to be as sharp and have as much clarity as like a more expensive, bigger, heavier L series lens. And, and that's just the way it is. Um, you know, a lot of people will look at images online and say, how come that image looks so clear and so sharp and mine doesn't? And a lot of that can be simply down to the quality of the glass. So don't take this as the definitive guide on focusing landscapes. Uh, the truth is I've been doing this many, many years and the best thing to do is go out and try a few different techniques and methods come back, look at the images on screen, and just see which is the sharpest. And then you'll know which method works best for you because all cameras and lenses are a little bit different and they like their own way of doing things. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And a massive thank you to Squarespace. If you are a photographer, 
and you're in need of a website to host your portfolio or maybe sell prints or anything like that, then definitely consider using Squarespace to build your website. Or yeah, you, sorry, you build, <laughs> you build your own website using Squarespace. Uh, so it's dead easy, you don't need to know coding, which is the genius behind, behind the whole thing. You just drag and drop. Um, I've built a website I built a couple of websites actually using Squarespace and you know it, it does what it says on the tin it's pretty good um, so yeah if you do need a website go to squarespace.com forward slash heaton and give it a free try and if you like free trial and the website's all looking nice and generally it's working well for you then use the offer code heaton for 10% off your first purchase I thank you so much and I will see you on Wednesday hopefully out in the field. All right, bye for now. <laughs>